your timing is literally, so you, we shouldn't have to wait for you at all. So you're basically just coming out and then you're getting back in. When you're making these movies, you have the primary unit, the, the principal photography that's directing the actors in all the dramatic scenes and, and the majority of the action scenes too. And you have a second unit that in this case was Guy Norris with a little help from Brian Smurrs when we did the pickups on this movie. You would come a little bit further here, you could scan that and then find that so you guys are there. You have that second unit and they're shooting a lot of the details and the sort of biggest aspects of the action sequences. Yeah, you were masking yourself. Yes, great. You get a hand up there to help you do that kind of reaction. There's too much of it. For us, our real pitch line ourselves during this is it's back to grounded reality as much as possible, in-camera stunts and action, which is what I love doing. There's so many set pieces, big set pieces, and so much destruction. And every kind of big set piece we build, we end up destroying. We would just see him. Mm -hmm. Which is nicer. Mm -hmm. so, so that to me feels long. I like that. You just want to like, put it in against the firewall. So. When we start the movie, we're in the first big action sequence that Charles, when she was a little girl, told Jean that both her parents were killed in the car crash that starts our film, essentially. Jean, was that. Did you? I didn't do anything. You wanted it to look like she killed her mother. You wanted it to look like her father could have survived or not, and that she went through something where she should have been extremely injured, but walked away from it. So when you put those three things together and, you, and the way you have to shoot that to show the story of it, we had to bring those two vehicles together and the car runs down a track and we brought it down. So we pulled the two vehicles together with another vehicle. So we rigged it on a two to one and then the two cables are con connected. So you can bring them right to their end mark and then you can tell exactly where the accident's gonna happen and then back them up. And when the truck pulls those two vehicles, they run right into the exact mark. What we had inside the pickup truck was a pipe ramp inside there. And then we had some structure built into the car so that when the two structures of the vehicles came together, it would launch the car up in the air and roll as if it was uh, crashing. One of the most impactful shots in the movie, I think, is when the car in slow motion rolls and you're on the faces of Jean's mother and father with little Jean in the back as the car slowly rotates. We rolled the car over and flipped it up and, and when you see from the inside of the car, the hood and everything collapses, the steering wheel comes down and there's a lot of internal damage to the vehicle. And then we're gonna put that on a rotisserie rig where we can spin it around so you can show that Jean is in the back and nothing's hitting her and she's in a little protective bubble. And then you can cut this all together and tell all the different stories of it. It's pretty interesting. We're trying to tell a more intimate story for the basis of those scenes. Here we go, and roll sound. So this is where we're spinning around uh, Jean Grey's car. This is kind of the mid part of the accident, so now we can play all the interior stuff where the car's rolling and flipping. We can have all the debris and the actors floating and flying and their arms are loose and everything's all tumbling around in the car. We're covered in rubber glass. We are doing the uh, car crash sequence today. So we're strapped in and our laps are full of um, silicone glass that will go flying when we go upside down. This will be two rotations. Here we go. And three, two, one, action! It's your standard car rolling rig. Uh, we got a couple of rolled rings that we have on uh, on bogies that are wheels that are set up to pivot so it stays all smooth. And now uh, we run this with a hydraulic system, so we're running basically two Omega drives to run this uh, with a hydraulic system and an endless rope. So we just keep turning the winch and the rig keeps turning and when we want to stop, it stops. So we've got uh, lots of horsepower behind it to make it nice and fast so you can accelerate and decelerate it quickly. And uh, it's computer controlled so we can decide where it stops. It stops upside down or right side up or at an angle so we can start and stop quickly and in the spots we want. That's a piece of equipment he has to specifically roll huge pieces of machinery that you want to film. So, you know, that, that sequence is a credit and the ability to make that as visceral and as sort of shocking as it is is a credit to camp. Cut there. Very nice, everybody. The very first time that we understand the power of what Gene had going on between herself and Dark Phoenix, there's a party sequence. And it's really all the younger mutants are having a party. It's just after they've come back from the space trip. Two more. I was hit with a solar flare up in space. Now I'm just partying. And I have this crazy energy about me. And, yep. and I'm drinking. And I can't get enough of everything. Then all of a sudden, yep. the voices and, and the noise of the music and the lights and everything's Dazzler. just 
crazy and um and I erupt. Stop, stop, stop! Why have we started using erupt? I don't because, think we've ever used erupt. Because, mm, really? I think erupt. that was I've been saying explode. Oh, I think I, I, don't know. I love erupt. I love erupt. I think erupt is. I erupt and I blow guys? everyone back. It's largely a sort of concussive event this first time. There's not really a lot of fire involved in it. So we, we sort of get as much of that as we can in camera, and then we try to build on top of that and sort of building a, a large sort of concussive, explosive event that knocks over trees and blows people aside and has a, a certain amount of a flash of light type component. But this is really the first time we've seen it, and we're not really taking it that far on this first time. Look how badass that is. <laughs> we end up having 27 people on ratchets where they were all the party goers that were getting blasted back in the air from her effect. Two, one, blast! Which leaves sort of her laying in a crater. Now we're gonna clear the lights. Here we go. And that causes then the flow for the rest of the movie and the breakup of the X-Men and the hunting of Jean, and then it carries on in a downward spiral from there. All right for the night. Thank you very much. Enjoy your Saturday night, everybody. The more real you can make it, whether that's practical effects or it's sets, the easier it is for all of us to make believe for ourselves and make the audience believe. This is Gene's neighborhood. Gene is confronted by the other ex-team members here, and there's a kind of a Western showdown in this street. You shouldn't have come here. Pretty much all the X-Men attempt to, in their own ways, capture her and bring her back to try to help her. Nightcrawler, there's a little bit of a Banff type fight goes on. They bamf down into a house, go through the window. There's a big fight in the house, which we've done. Gene, please! She then bursts out of uh, the side of her own house. Quicksilver goes into Quicksilver time. But of course, none of it really is a match for the Phoenix side of Jean. Physically, she can't go as fast as me, but mentally, she's most likely faster. This is the part of the sequence where Jean is inside the house. She's freaking out. She just knocked out Nightcrawler, and she's going to blow out of the side of the house. That's what you'll see in the movie after Kurt and Phil have done their wonderful work. That orange wire is uh, called Beeline. It's detonating cord. It's between 12 and 15 grains per inch. It's a high explosive, burns at around between 17,000 and 21,000 feet a second. She comes blasting on the side of the house, so we had to build that with balsa wood and everything to be safe and launch a bunch of cannons and some detonating cord behind it to splinter it up so it looked like impressive, like you know, her telekinesis is coming through the wall. She deflects one of the uh, lightning bolts from Storm, so that goes into the side of a house and we got to blow that out. We didn't want to have two houses side by side, one with a big hole for the gene, and have a lightning strike do exactly the same thing. So we wanted to make a different gag with that. So we made a balsa wood wall that exploded, but we held it back with steel, and then we pulled it in. So it looked like it's in the end, there's a bunch of debris left behind. And then Quicksilver oh, uses the head debris head. as stepping stones to try and reach Gene. She switches him off, and then he continues down the rest of the street about 200 yards, tumbling like a high side off a uh, high-speed motorcycle crash. So Quicksilver ends up somewhere way down there uh, with a few broken bones. In this event, what's happening is this is when Gene throws up her hand and creates a force field. The cop cars are on a rail. There's dummies inside the cop cars. Cam is going to pull them in at about 25 miles an hour. With this gag here, we, uh, you know, obviously the cars hit the invisible wall. So it's a bit of trickery to get everything to slide and everything to happen properly. So we had a system inside the car that was tied back to weight sleds in the back of the track. And when the cars get to the end, it pulls the cables back and pulls the front bumper into the rest of the car. So it looks like a hand invisible wall, but it actually is all happening from behind it. And then we had cannons in the car to flip it up, because of course, no gags complete without flipping cars in the air. Three, two, one, act. Stay away from me! 
bunch of tiny little pieces that all gotta go well and you end up with a gag like that. There's a sequence in the movie where Gene goes to Kenosha, which is this land for mutants, and the US military show up with some helicopters, and there's a fight, essentially, between Gene and Eric. Eric's powers of being able to magnetically control things versus Gene's telekinesis. For me, it was really cool to read the script and see what we were doing in this sequence and using a helicopter as a weapon. I'd never seen that before, and it's something pretty cool. It was something that, you know, everyone thinks helicopters are cool. When you have two superheroes fighting over one and chopping things up with them, it's, uh, it's a pretty interesting thing for sure. She's going to tip that helicopter so that the rotor gets, like, almost to your throat. Cam created a rig that was two cranes, and those cranes, he had a line in between them that could hold up to 8,000 pounds that he could control to go forward and back and tilt one way or another as Eric and Gene were fighting over it. Stop that. It's not me. It's me. Get down! That allowed us to, you know, really choreograph some really close camera moves, but still have it flying around in the air and as practical as possible. So then the only thing that uh, visual effects had to do for us is, is put the blades in. To back and forth sort of tug of war for the helicopter, and the body of the chopper is swinging toward them and swinging back and going sideways. And the stunt performers that are trying to pile into it are all running and jumping and leaping into what is, in fact, a chopper that is bobbing and weaving off the ground. So this is our uh, hydraulic V-rig. We have two big hydraulic winches that we run with uh, a diesel-powered hydraulic pump. This is 680 horsepower. It'll run our helicopter at about three feet a second by itself. Uh, we want to run the helicopter through the field at about 12 feet a second. So we have hydraulic accumulators that uh, we can store a bunch of hydraulic power in. So we use the pump to fill the accumulators and then we have stored energy. This machine makes me very excited. <laughs> this is one of my favorite things of the film. I just like big powerful stuff and that's what this is. And uh, you know, if you're gonna pick up a helicopter with uh, you know 12 people in it, then uh, you need lots of power behind that. So, so it's a lot of fun for me to do this kind of rig and this is what I really like to do in film. They're very complex, ambitious set pieces to the film made maybe a little bit more challenging and more complex by the fact that the tone of the movie is trying to be so real. When I see it now, I'm afraid people won't know that we actually did these things. So they'll assume it's a visual effect as opposed to a practical effect. Yeah!